Good evening everybody and welcome to another student talks tonight. Tonight we are going to have our sixth session. And tonight again uh, we are going to have our live session with two different students from two different universities. And our first guest is Gökçe Gök and from Süleyman Demirel University and another our other guest is from uh, uh, Mehmet Seymen from Istanbul Technical University. When they are here, we are going to start our live session with them. Uh, let me invite them, uh, then we are going to start. Okay, I think they are not here yet. Let me invite. Yes. Uh, and now I'll invite the chair. Yes, I think. Yes, Mehmet is here. Yes, there is Mehmet. Hello, Mehmet. Hello. Hello. It's nice to see you. I've invited Gökçe. I'm waiting for her to you accept too. my you. invitation. Just a moment. When she's here. We are going to start. Hello, I don't know, John. It's nice to see you here as usual. <laughs> Hello, Tetan John. It's also great to see you. I have sent Gökçe an, in, an invitation to join. Let me check. Waiting her for her to accept the invitation. Hello, Mehmet, are you there? Ah, okay, Mehmet is here. But Gökçe, we are still waiting, Gökçe, but. I don't know. I sent message to her, but uh, okay. She cannot answer, I guess. I don't know. Let me invite her again. One more time. I have invited her. Yes, there she is. Okay, it's nice. Gökçe, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. All right, it's it's really great to see you guys here in Student Talks Session 6. And I would like to say thank you and for accepting my invitation to this session. And it's really important for us to know about your ideas. It's really great to see you here. And um, thank you for your inv invitation to us. And I'm so excited and happy to be here. Uh -huh. And greetings from Izmir. <laughs> nice, thank you. Greetings from Manisa then. And Mehmet, where are you now? Are you also in Manisa? Sorry, Izmir? Um, I'm also participating from Kojeli. Uh, oh, nice. I'm having an internship here, product internship in uh, Fort Otosan. Because of oh. that, uh, I'm here. Mm, I see. Yeah. Okay, great. And thank All you right. for your in invitation. It's, thank you very much for accepting it. All right. So let's uh, let's start our live sessions. So because we have lots of questions to discuss and we have lots of questions to uh, ask and uh, know your ideas about it. All right. So can you tell us? Uh, can you tell us about yourself, please, and a bit about your experiences in language learning? Let's start with you, Mehmet. Okay, um, I'm studying at Istanbul Technical University. Uh, this is my last year. Uh, I will be graduated uh, at summer uh, from management engineering department. And uh, before uh, this school, uh, I was studying uh, at Boğaziçi University uh, in uh, chemical engineering. And oh. I decided to change my school after three years. And uh, I had a preparation class in there. And uh, before the decision of uh, 
changing my school uh, i just uh, passed the uh, it i use a proficiency mm-hmm. exam and uh, i didn't have a preparation uh, class uh, in istanbul tech university and uh, <laughs> this is my uh, short story i see thank you very much mehmet what about you gökçe and um, i just graduated from süleyman emre university english language teaching department now i'm in izmir and i'm preparing for some uh, academic exams here mm-hmm. great great thank you very much and uh, as for language learning and um, i i had an um, prep class in süleyman emre university and um, but as for english learning and um, english was a part of my life since i was a child because uh, i grew up in antalya and my my family uh, has worked in tourism area and so uh, english and also a little germany was a part of my life mm-hmm. but um uh, i i learned and uh, english in high school and university university i learned how to teach english But uh, while um, I'm learning how to teach English, I also learn English because learning never stops. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. Thank you very much, Gökçe. Okay. Thank you, both of you. Let's move to another question. And what was or were your turning point or points in your own education? Let's start uh, with you, Gökçe, this time. Okay. And uh, in fact, I had uh, a few uh, turning points and... First Wait. one was um, was the um, most difficult one, and uh, as many I changed my uh, university and or department, uh, I left the faculty of or department of law with, um, because of English language teaching. And English language teaching is my first uh, department, and it was my it was. most difficult decision i have ever made in my life because i went against the social norms because when um, when you graduate from high school uh, your ex, uh, people expect you to go to university after university uh, you are ex- expected to find a job or get married or after mm-hmm. university you should go after me ma or um, finding a job and and uh, i while i was student in sparta sulaiman university most of my students um, my friends from high school or my childhood friends graduated from university most of them got got a job or mm-hmm. got married and while and um, they completed most important areas in their life i was still a student it was very difficult <laughs> nice. but um uh, i don't feel sad or ashamed it was Most Don't difficult be. was uh-huh. best decision I have ever had, and another one was I attended an academic conference with my dear lecturer Oyetona Boylu, and it was one of my most important areas in my life because I decided where I belong, which is mm-hmm. academia, and another one is that uh, in pandemic I. attended a tupitak project and it was in october 2020 2020 it was organized by dear betubal gezegin from mm-hmm. south nanokuma university and it was a turning point for me because before i after that project i met many people that motivate me and inspire me uh-huh. also um, after that project I had I had chance to attend many other events like this mm-hmm. so it was a turning point for me. I see thank you very much and what you you really made a really really good decision Gökçe about it. Don't and don't be shamed or don't embarrassed about your decisions. Yeah. You made something good really. Good luck and go for it. Thank you very much Gökçe. What about you Mehmet? I don't have so much uh, turning points uh, like Gökçe but I can uh, say uh, preparation class uh, of my high school um, is a turning point for me because uh, it was so good to pass uh, Boğaziçi's 
proficiency exam after this uh, uh, high school preparation uh, year. Um, uh, it was uh, so good for my English, mm-hmm. I guess. I it was a turning point. For you. All right. Thank you very much, Mehmet. That's also an, another turning point for you. Good. Thank you. Let's move to another question. And what are your expectations for the rest of the year? Let's start with you, Mehmet. Um, for the rest of the year, uh, as I mentioned, um, I will be graduated, I hope. And uh, after this, um, I'm I tr- I'm trying to find uh, a good job, uh, and and uh, it's so hard uh, uh-huh. for me to decide uh, what I want, uh, because uh, in my department I have many options. Uh, I'm an engineer and uh, I'm a management student. Because of that. Uh, I have many options, but uh, having many options uh, are not uh, so good to uh, decide uh, clearly. Uh-huh. Uh, because of that, uh, these are my expectations. I see. Thank you very much, Mehmet. What about you, Gökçe? And uh, my and Tubitak project, uh, Tubitak University research projects was uh, approved by Tubitak, uh, and I want to focus on. And this is on summer. I also prepare for some exams. I also have some uh, research topics for future academic events. So I want to focus on this. But besides this uh, academic success, I want to focus on uh, the health and my family because uh, without the, uh, without having health, uh, success doesn't matter. Uh, this pandemic process and the um, The things I got through uh, this month taught mm-hmm. me a lot. So being healthy and being with my family and not ones is most important thing. And also um, the the things that inspire and motivate me, like these ideas, is really important for me. I see. Thank you very much, both of you. All right, let's move to another question. All right, could you could you find enough opportunities to practice? speaking in the class and outside the classroom yes Mehmet let's start with you um when uh I was having uh, my preparation class or generally in university or wh- you can where? talk about both of them both of them uh, of course definitely not uh, because uh being in abroad or working in abroad uh, or just studying uh, in there is so essential Uh, to make more practice. On the other hand, of course, you can find uh, a few options. Uh, uh, for example, the, you can uh, have uh, speaking courses uh, like uh, Cambly or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are many brands now uh, in the sector. Um, but uh, speaking uh, in a uh, foreign uh, language speaker uh, as a friend uh, is... Uh, Is the essential uh, point, I guess, uh, because of that, uh, I cannot say uh, I have, I had uh, many chances uh, uh, about practicing uh, speaking. I see. Thank you very much, Mehmet. Yes. What about you, Gökçe? And as for university, in in the prep class, we had a, a, a speaking club, and it was really effective for me, but. As for university, and there are some events that is organized by the uh, Erasmus Club or International Student Club, and and these these are really really effective for me. And I I, I also joined some uh, speaking clubs, uh, mm-hmm. which are organized organized for the adult learners. But maybe uh, it would it would be better for it uh, more, uh, if it would. It would be better if uh, it's more permanent for universities. Uh-huh. I see. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. So I hope you will find lots of <laughs> chance to speak. Uh, next. <coughs> All right. So let's move to another question. Mehmet, uh, this question is for you. You had um, tens of maybe exams or quizzes in your English classes. So do you think they were... Related to the real life. If not, what kind of questions would you like to see in the exams? 
I think uh, they uh, they were not related uh, with the real life. But uh, which exam? Uh, like, which uh, exam I mean, is like related to real life? Uh-huh. Like generally, your exams like the speaking, academic, uh, academic. Yes, the English exams. I mean. If you want uh, me to speak about English, uh, I can say academically yes, because uh, I use uh, many of them uh, in my uh, school uh, during the uh, during my university education. Because of that, yes, but uh, speaking uh, is the essential part uh-huh. uh, to uh, to say uh, I can speak this uh, language. Uh, and because of that uh, speaking uh, education uh, uh, should be added uh, to our uh, education system in turkey mm-hmm. especially uh, and uh, of course uh, i uh, i had the chance to uh, improve my uh, theoretical knowledge uh, about english like uh, grammar mm-hmm. reading writing And uh, these are uh, so essential uh, to uh, have English uh, education, especially in uh, engineering. I see. Because of that, um, I can say yes and no, uh, both of them uh, <laughs> can be correct. I see. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, Gökçe, and th- we have a different question for you. What materials or activities keeps you most engaged in English classes and why and when i think um i think and the, one, the ones that which is uh, related to real life or made me question the, my environment or the real life or my life uh, is more uh, effective for me and the ones um, which is re- um, related to authentic materials or i can um, reach on the internet So uh, made, made me uh, research more. Uh, it's uh, re- effective for me. Um, rather than giving giving students only materials and study or read it, and mm-hmm. um, reading to students is, I think, more, more important. In and I also made an internship for the secondary school, and the the thing I realized that uh, the Affecting students' interest to listen by uh, relating materials or lessons to real life. It attracts yes. their attention to listen. So I think um, being able to use authentic materials in listening or reading or speaking or writing is really important for me. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Gökçe. And next question is is for both of you. Do you think You have you have learned how to learn. For example, after all those years with English lessons, like can you start learning another foreign language on your own? Let's start with you, Gökçe. Okay, I think I have I have my own uh, methods for learning English or learning a foreign language, but I think it's it can change depending on the the characteristics of that language i think for example learning turkish or learning english or learning arabic can change because the uh, language characteristic of this language is different but i think the most important thing by learning the language is being able to um, um ex- exposing that language to you and and being able being able to analyzing that language they are uh, spoken and mm-hmm. written, written language is really important but as I say for example uh, a, for a, a German person learning Turkish and learning English can be very different it, I think it can depend it can change depending on the language I see thank you thank you Gökçe what about you Mehmet what is your idea about it Um, actually, uh, I think uh, with the same way of uh, Gökçe, uh, there are common points uh, to learning languages like uh, watching a series uh, without mm-hmm. subtitle uh, 
in uh, the uh, target language and uh, of course uh, critical point uh, can be changed uh, from language to language uh, that's why uh, mm-hmm. uh, I cannot uh, I cannot uh, choose uh, one of them mm, I see all right thank you very much both of you for your answers all right Mehmet Uh, this question is for you. Do you feel that you have learned how to read and listen in terms of language skills? Yes, uh, I think uh, because uh, you should learn uh, these skills uh, to uh, have uh, education in universities uh, I studied uh, They are uh, maybe uh, they are not the best uh, in uh, English education, but uh, they want to uh, the best English. Mm-hmm. And because of that, uh, with the courses you have, uh, you improve yourself uh, and your English because uh, it's so uh, hard to understand uh, some of the theoretical uh, courses. Uh, in engineering because of that uh, I can say yes okay thank you very much Mehmet I have to <laughs> yeah <laughs> so work for it okay thank you yes Gökçe let's move to you as teachers we are use the term washback effect and we know that washback effect to, of testing can be both positive and negative And so I have a questions about your assessment, you know, experiences. Like, can you tell us about a test that motivated you and make made you study and learn more and a test that caused just the opposite? But before answering the question, let me invite Mehmet one more time <laughs> to the session because he has left. I think he had a connection problem. Okay, now he's here. Hello, Mehmet, are you there? Hello, okay. Yes, I'm here. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yes, Gökçe, uh, you can uh, answer the question. And as for um, as a student or a, and a teacher, I love um, being creative. And as for and when I think about my assessments, for example. Being able to apply, uh, apply a knowledge to uh, a, a material or a, turning it, it, it to a creative team motivates me. Um, for example, um, uh, answering, answering some uh, questions in an exam uh, doesn't motivate me so much. But I know that it's uh, a needed and it's very important to but. Uh, using creativity in assessment is really important for me and ma- uh, making students more productive and creative in assessment I think mm-hmm. it's really important. For example, uh, we had an assessment course um, this year and we prepared exam questions for the uh, secondary school students and I I really enjoyed wh- while I was preparing my uh, assessment assignment but um, we have also some uh, written exam in that course and I also enjoyed it but uh, turning my love to creativity motivates me so much because um, the pro- product uh, it improves my productivity and I, I can think I can question uh, I can think the authentic materials I can think how to attract to students Mm-hmm. in uh, attention and uh, how can assess them more in an effective way so I think uh, the creativity and making students think and question is really important for me I think it's creativity I see all right thank you very much Dr. Chip. Mehmet let's move to you with a different questions but I think he uh-huh. okay there he is Mehmet If yes, you could have, if you could have, what would you have skipped or added in your English lessons? As I mentioned, uh, it will be uh, speaking. Mm-hmm. All right. Would you like to add or skip? 
Add. Uh, you would like to add speaking. All right. So can I ask you why? Why you would like to add more speaking lessons? Um, as I mentioned, uh, speaking uh, is a essential part, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we have uh, I, I can say uh, many of uh, our schools, uh, high school or mm -hmm. universities, have good, uh, for example, reading uh, education or. Uh, no problem. Okay. Yes, you are. I'm in now. Uh -huh. Okay. You back. Uh, and uh, but uh, we we don't have uh, speaking uh, practices e enough in our schools uh, in universities uh, i've been uh, in uh, one of the most uh, uh, popular and uh, best in english uh, universities uh, at least uh, two of them uh -huh. and uh, uh, as I see, uh, it's not enough. I see. That's why you want the more speaking lessons in your English education. I Maybe see. we Thank can you. have more Erasmus students from Europe. Generally, ah, uh, they are coming point. from Middle East. And, uh, of course, uh, they can uh, come from Middle East, but uh, they are not... Uh, English uh, is not their uh, main language. I see. Uh, when you, I mean, you want uh, Erasmus students, but they want you to they want you to come them from the European countries. I mean, I mean, I, you mean? Yes, uh, and uh, I, I cannot understand. They are uh, uh, Erasmus students, but uh, they are not from Europe. Uh, I see. I have okay. uh, some friends <laughs> from uh, IT. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, Gökçe, let's uh, move to you with another, with different questions. Can you describe uh, a good example of learning environment in terms of English classes? Mm. As our English class, um, can I turn this into to in English language teaching in, in a sure. more general way? Okay. And I can give an example of... Um, um, Ingate and Seoul, Seoul, Turkey, and right now, Ingate and, and these co these communities are um, have, have people that share their knowledge and experience with uh, with the English language learners and English language teachers for years, and um, they they share their knowledge with others, and the others share their own no knowledge and experience, and they they create and uh, English language community and learning or learning community uh -huh. and I I made a presentation about this that and um, this kind of events are learning the impact of these learning communities and I last said the and some some people who has um, main interests or main goals and come come together and share their knowledge or they motivate that each other or inspire each other and they create and English and uh, learning community, for example, that, and there are some groups that um, get, share their knowledge or experience about, for example, copy system, yeah, there's on Alex exam, there are some groups in, for example, in Telegram, and this can be also um, a learning community, or I, I guess. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, that's all I think about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gökçe. Thank you. Okay, Mehmet, let's move to you with another different question again. Do you think you had uh, known what you were expected to achieve at the end of the academic year when you first started uh, your prep year? And is it important to know and why? Um, I guess it's up to you uh, if it's important or not. Uh, it was not so important for me because ex mm. expectations uh, are can be changed uh, during the time, and uh, I prepare a good answer for this uh, for these uh, questions. Um, as I write, of course, yeah. at the beginning I had a lot of expectations as a new student of the most famous university for English. In fact. Uh, I can say that my expectations were met, but 
uh, it was not because they give the best education, as I mentioned. Uh, they want the best uh, English. Uh-huh. I see. But uh, nice. I was improved and uh, I was uh, so good at English uh, in both perspectives, reading, writing or uh-huh. listening uh, compared to beginning. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mehmet. Okay, let's uh, move to Gökçe to you. But Gökçe, what makes a teacher the best and the worst for you? Be careful about your answers because maybe your teachers, uh, you know, when they are here, they can listen it later. So. <laughs> Okay, and um, I I'm think just that... kidding. I'm just kidding. You are free to talk. You can say whatever you want. Okay. Um, I think that there is not such a thing as a worse teacher or a bad teacher. I think, and uh, there is think that there is a teacher who knows how to communicate with students, how to reach their students, and because a teacher how to reach their students or communicate with students knows how to use effective or suitable materials for students and they also have to uh, use uh, effective uh, methods or techniques in the in the uh-huh. lessons because uh, you can be able to use uh, effective materials or effective methods and create a, a positive communication between students and teachers I think it's that I think a good teacher also is can uh, is a teacher that and uh, is an adapt- adaptable to uh, students needs or their environment for example um, i just graduated from english language teaching where i learned some methods or techniques or design techniques or using education technology for example but um, when i i go to a city that i can't use education technology or students with English who has lower English level, I I should I and I have to adapt myself to students' needs. So mm-hmm. I think that and and being able to and uh, you use their their words or um, their teaching style in an effective way for their students because the uh, methods or techniques or materials can change due to students and their background. I think. I see. Thank you very much, Gökçe, for your answer. All right, it's good. It's about it. And what do you think about the teacher, the best and the worst one? All right, thank you. Let's move to different questions. These questions from both both of you, Gökçe and Mehmet. Can you tell us five phrasal verbs that you always use in or outside the classes? Let's start with you, Mehmet. I I get this from uh, Gökçe <laughs> because uh... no problem. <laughs> Okay, come on, come up with, get along, uh, go on, look up. Uh, these are my answers. Ah, oh, your answer. This phrase of verbs you are using it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. What about you, Gökçe? What phrase of verbs you use? Um, and figure out or figure something and and calm down and and dress up or dress I... up. Uh-huh. <laughs> And, and go ahead, find out and come up with because I always have uh, research ideas for the conference. Mm-hmm. I see. Thank you. Nice phrase of words that you mentioned here. Thank you very much, both of you. All right. This is a very interesting questions, and I'm really wondering what I'm going to say about a question. If you could have one superpower to use in the classroom, what would it be and how would it help you? Gökçe, let's start with you. Okay, and I think it would be being able to manage the classroom management. Uh-huh. Okay, so why? Uh-huh. Because, because the classroom management is the most important thing and the most discussed problem in the education. Mm-hmm. And and uh, I think it would be a very important or very funny thing that being able to... Um, manage the classroom, manage with all the noise in the classroom. And another thing that I think that 
and being able to uh, transform the students to another environment, for example, teaching, speaking, or pronunciation, and uh, being being able to make uh, make them listen the some voices or some sounds in an original way, for example, while uh, teaching them some uh, verbs about the Zoom, being able to. Uh, transform the environment to zoo in a YouTube uh, way. I, th I think we are dreaming here. It's okay. It's but nice. I think it, this can be a reality because of the um, uh, augmented reality in the future. I think in the future this, this should be a real thing, I think. Oh, I see. All right. Thank you very much for your superpowers. Very interesting <laughs> and very useful superpower, Gökçe. Thank you. What about you, Mehmet? Uh, to be honest, uh, I think that uh, I'm super enough for a classroom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, memorizing Wonderful. the words. <laughs> Great answer. Memorizing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, memorizing uh, all the foreign words uh, can be a good spur power uh, memory uh, expanded memory uh, can be a good uh, superpower for me i see very well thank you very much for the good two superpowers uh, that we heard from you thank you very much to both of you all right so let's move to another question what was the biggest challenge that you have faced uh, this year so far Mehmet, let's start with you Um, this year uh, was a challenge for me totally uh, because uh, I was studying uh, uh, at uh, Istanbul Technical University and uh, I had many courses and uh, this is my last year and uh, I was uh, working in a global marketing and advertising company. Uh -huh. uh, this uh, uh, it's so hard to uh, proceed uh, both of them together uh, because of that uh, it was a total challenge for, challenge for you <laughs> but actually uh, I, I cannot give a, a special uh, exact uh, example no this is not a, a kind of an example for a challenge thank you yes. very much what about you Gökçe and for me and we came back from the pandemic to our most intense year as a teachers because uh, we have internship we have uh, some exams for to prepare the KPSS, ILSTRS or um, TOEFL. I also um, joined some academic events like some conferences or webinars or online trainings and um, being able to manage this was really intense and really difficult but I did my best I think. and also uh, being able to adapt the face-to-face uh, -face education was really different because we had two years in the pandemic. Yeah, with the mask. <laughs> It still feels like a dream. <laughs> But, no, but okay, nice. Thank you very much, Gökçe, about your uh, uh, ideas and answers for the question. All right, let's move to the next question. Can you tell us five adjectives, uh, five adjectives that describe an effective language learners i said language learners but you can take it as a learners generally gökçe do yes, you want gökçe. to start yeah okay let's okay. start with gökçe <laughs> <laughs> and i um organized and fo organized focused uh-huh mm. number three We are waiting for number three. You said two. Creative, maybe. Creative, maybe. Uh, but nice example. You said creative. And critical. Okay. One And more. And I think um, social because learning a language is a is a sort of cultural thing. I uh, see. Oh, nice point. Okay, thank you. Good adjectives. What about you, Mehmet? Um, I think uh, I should add uh, Gökçe's uh, because uh, I uh, I count creative, being creative, determined, focused, confident, and the uh, most important one, uh, being curious, uh, being is so curious. essential. Wow. Nice, nice, nice adjectives about it. Thank you very much to both for the adjectives that you mentioned here. All right. By the way, just two questions left, you know, uh, for this, for, yeah. 
Okay, let's move to the next question. This is very interesting questions. So think that we finish the interview and you step outside the house or home and find a lottery ticket that ends up with winning $10 million. What would you do? Let's start with you, Mehmet. Um, I guess uh, I should uh, first complete my internship. <laughs> Then uh, uh, after that, uh, I can decide. Uh, but uh, I guess uh, probably I will uh, make a, make an investment uh, partly, partly. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I can have a new car, of course. Why not with uh, one million dollars? <laughs> excellent, excellent idea. Especially the investment Nine enough part. for the investment. <laughs> Good. What about you, Gökçe? Thank you, Mehmet. Okay. I think um, first um, I will pay for the um, price of the KPSS, um, CLS, CDS exams for the uh, all citizens or I wish I could pay for the all of the citizens because uh, the price are really high, of course. <laughs> And uh, in fact, I think um, when I first solve this question i think that i think and uh, i lost my mother last summer and it will be one year in in august so i will um, create a library for, uh, that honors or her name and in addition to that i i'm also very interested in special education and teach english special mm-hmm. students with special needs i think i will do something for them because i don't think We don't um, really pay attention to these citizens because, uh, as I mentioned before, my to be talk project is about them teaching English to citizens with uh, special needs. So I also uh, spent my money on it, and I have some uh, goals or plans about the special education in the future. I hope, I hope, uh, I have enough money for that. Don't worry, I think ten million dollars will be enough. To <laughs> let your <laughs> dreams come true. But sorry for your loss, by the way. I she rest in peace. Okay. Okay. So let's move to the last question. Yes. Let's start with you, Gökçe. What is your motto? My motto is um, follow your heart, heart, and do what you love. Do what you love and love what you do. Love is the key and as Kenan Dolu says and ne yaparsan yap, aşkla yap. Ah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> nice, you ended the end, you nice, nice ending about it, Kenan Dolu. Okay, good. All right, what about you, Mehmet? Uh, I cannot decide my motto yet. <laughs> oh, okay. But, but after the graduation, uh, it can be, uh, don't worry, <laughs> be happy. <laughs> Ay, nice one. Maybe. <laughs> Or just okay. take it, it's all yours. I see. All right, thank you very much. Nice. Maybe one. I should, uh, maybe I, I should uh, check a party terms. Uh, What videos. is that? <laughs> Some of them. Oh, I see. Okay. He's yeah. interviewed the is very attractive to find the <laughs> motto. Okay, you should do that. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, that's all my questions, guys. Thank you very much uh, for your answers. That was really wonderful. Before before ending, before ending our live session, would you like to add anything else, Gökçe? Okay, and I want to add something about that. The <laughs> first thing I mentioned in the beginning of the. <laughs> by the way, I, I'm sorry that interrupt Mehmet. You had you got your answers from Setamay Hocam. She says your tactic maktik yok. You can be the yes. You can that can be your motto. <laughs> I also saw. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you very much, Setamay Hocam. Um, yes, Gökçe. I can say that um, the fact that you reach your goals later than uh, other people uh, doesn't make you an unsuc- unsuccessful or uh, the reaching your goals uh, earlier doesn't make more successful to them. Uh, the definition of success can change depending on the everyone because for example when we think about the academy or academic world some people wish their um, profession pro- professor or associate professor degree in their uh, earlier or young age but some people older than, than them 
Uh, are they in doctoral degree? So all of them are successful. So the definition of success can change depending on you. The timeline, uh, the timeline is different for everyone. For example, you can graduate from the uh, university in a young age, but um, finding the finding a job you love or your desire can last many years. Or and the graduating the university can last many years so uh, it can change them so uh, i know it's very difficult when because we live in an environment that some parents compare their own children with each other and it's very difficult but please don't compare with um, yourself with others and compare yourself with yourself and i uh, it's the end um, <laughs> And and make your decisions with uh, your heart and and uh, think uh -huh. about it. Uh, are your decisions uh, is your own de decisions or are there are the are those decisions are your feminist decisions? Because it's your life and your decisions should be up to you. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, Gökçe. What about you, Nahat? Um. Uh, I don't want to uh, add something uh, like Gökçe, but uh, <laughs> thank you uh, for your invitation. Uh, it was so nice uh, being with you, uh, you with your uh, meeting or uh, interview. Uh, right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Gökçe and Mehmet. Mehmet and it was that was really great that you uh, spent your time with you here and for being our our my guest for student talks. All right, that's really important for us to listen your ideas and to listen your suggestions about about the questions that I ask you because these questions are related with the language education, and uh, that's really really nice. And thank you for your support, by the way. Okay, Gökçe and Mehmet uh, were with us here with the student talks six, and we are going to be here next week at the same time on the same day with the teacher talks. Sorry, student talks, student talks time and uh, day all right so until the next week uh, take care of yourselves good morning good afternoon and good evening and good night wherever you are and i and i mentioned here before take care of yourselves and peace everybody and bye 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 Gökçe and Mehmet. thank you bye 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 bye, -bye.